how's it going? Sorry, I almost forgot to turn these damn lights on. I don't know if you guys still care to have these lights on, but I know several videos I just don't even notice. I just don't even care. I don't. I don't even have them on. This video is so it's horror Tuesday. It's horror Tuesday today, so we're going to be doing. Three true pizza delivery horror stories animated. And someone did suggest I do Iron Mar Scary Tales, so for this Tuesday afternoon, let's do some scary animated stories. I wanted to do Mr. Nightmare, but I was like, you know what? I can wait on Mr. Nightmare. I could do that Saturday or something like that. So, um, starting. 15 minutes of horror stories animated, which again, animated horror stories are so much better because again, you don't have to just listen. I feel like it's harder to listen to horror stories because then it's like you can, you, like you can fall asleep. It can kind of put you to bed, but if you're actually watching something along with the voice, then I feel like it's better. I'm going to take some D before I forget. This don't mind me if I'm sucking on something. It's just these. They're not really gummies, but whatever. Pizza delivery. Ah, <laughs> I have pizza delivery right here, bro. Nah, it, was, it wasn't delivered. It was Costco pizza. If you guys have not had Costco pizza before, Please try it. I assume every every Costco has the food place, and then the pizza is bomb, and, and, and it's huge when too. I was 19. I worked for a small town pizza delivery company near my house. I worked here as a means to save up money while I was in college. I lived with my parents, so I didn't have many expenses. Me too. I was able to live fairly frugally and save around 80% of my money, which was nice. It's good. After a couple of months of working there, the manager quickly gave me a promotion. He really liked my work ethic, but of course, with a raise comes more responsibility. Yes. Instead of just making the pizza, I was now responsible for picking up the phone, and sometimes doing dishes, and even delivering the pizza myself. So this is pizza, yeah, it's pizza delivery horror story. So I was just thinking pizza stories, but now it's pizza delivery, okay. I actually enjoyed delivering pizza. That was my favorite part of my job because it barely felt like I was working. Most nights I would walk away with $75 or more in tips, plus my $12 an hour wage, which wasn't horrible for the time being. Mm. I enjoyed driving around and listening to music while doing my deliveries. That's true. I've always known it was a somewhat dangerous job, especially delivering at night in unfamiliar areas. And either I feel like daytime is fine, but no nighttime, fuck that shit. I'm not working on nighttime, sorry. Rough part of town or in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes, unfortunately, you also run into the non-tippers, or people that try to make your life a living hell. Mm. I was pretty stoic, though, and I was very good at keeping my composure when things like this would happen. However, this night in particular was something else, and caught me off guard completely. There was a man that would call our restaurant every so often, and he would always say something weird. But then he would hang up right after. Sort of like a prank call. Mm. One time he said he was going to bang my mom, and another time he asked me how my skin tasted. I always knew it was him. What the because fuck? Of the Can I bang your mom? Sure, here she is. What the fuck? All her ID, but we weren't allowed to block him. Company etiquette, I guess. Eventually I just stopped answering his calls altogether. After some time, he stopped calling, thankfully, but he called again months later, and I picked up the phone. Right away, I recognized his voice and realized who I was talking to. Except this time, he said he actually wanted a pizza and he wasn't being weird like usual. He even apologized to me and said that he won't do it again. That he I'm not like look at his teeth, bro. I mean, my teeth are gross too, so I can't judge. But honestly, like I wouldn't even trust him, especially delivering food to him. No, thank you. He just wants a pizza fair and square. Mm -hmm. He even said that he will tip the driver we send out thirty dollars in an effort to apologize. Fortunately, I wasn't really allowed to say no to a customer anyways. My manager wasn't there, and he had just left a few minutes before. And I wasn't going to send one of the teenagers out there in the middle of the night to deal with this creepy guy. So, I decided to do it myself. I didn't think anything would happen to me, and I thought I could hold my ground. I took his order, and I wrote down his address. When the pizza was done, I stepped to my car, and off I was to his house. The closer I got, the more I realized that maybe this wasn't a great situation to be in. I got this sinking feeling inside that felt like disparity. It was about a 12 minute drive or so, which wasn't too far, 
but it was, however, right on the county line. If it would have been another mile away, it would have been out of our delivery range. I knew I had to deliver this pizza, and it was too late to turn around. I turned onto the dirt road, and before I could fully realize what I was getting myself into, I was at the house. I stopped and stared at the creepy tall white house for a minute. It was pitch black, with not a single person in sight, nor a sign of life at all. I got out of my car, and when my headlights shut off, I could barely see anything in front of me. I thought about leaving the pizza on the porch, but I knew that wasn't proper and could look bad on the company. Plus, I remembered the $30 tip that he promised. Before I even knocked, the door swung open and creaked the whole way. It was a bald man, middle-aged, probably around 40 or so. Hey Josh, nice to finally meet you, the man said. How did he know my name? I stopped and stared and realized he probably read my name tag on my shirt. Still, it was extremely creepy given the circumstances. Your total is $23.22, sir. He looked at me for a prolonged period of time with a creepy smile on his face before saying, Okay. That was all he said. I was waiting for him to hand me the money, but he was just looking at me with this soulless... No, okay, no, I could not. Like, I could not. I'm sorry, I would just... Oh my god, I can't. The eyes. Then, that was right when he said one of the most uncomforting things that anyone has ever said to me. Has anyone ever tried to hurt you before? You know, while doing these deliveries, he asked. I feel like he, if he says no, he'll be like, I'll be the first... And I'd be like, oh, hell no. I looked at him with confusion and said, No, um, what do you mean? Oh, nothing, he exclaimed. I just wondered. There are a lot of weirdos out here, so you never know. Yeah, you... His grin became oh, God, that's terrifying. Oh. Wider, like his devilish that's bone chilling. Unfold. I got a surge of energy and paranoia that bolted from my chest, and I told him that I had to leave before giving my tip or even giving him his change. I ran to my car. Just then, I heard footsteps to my right approaching me from the distance in the darkness. Fuck. Luckily, I was faster than them. Oh my god. My car safely. I looked behind me as I slammed my door shut and turned the car on. There were two grown men standing right in front of my car, and one of them had a baseball bat in his hands. They both had ski masks on. I beelined out of there and never looked back. As I was backing out, I ran over a man that I hadn't seen yet that was also wearing a mask. I have no idea if he lived or not. <laughs> Damn, he just, just runs so dark. Eh, it's fine. It's their fault anyways, who cares? Maybe I committed manslaughter that night. I'll never really know. I mean, what are you gonna do? Call the, call the cops? Like, if you're the one that I got ran over, what are you, someone ran me over, all I was doing was trying to rob them. Like, what are you gonna say? Nobody at the restaurant believed me about this story besides one of my good friends, Jimmy. So I ended up quitting a few days later. When I got home that night and told my parents, we called the police and those people were gone. The house was vacant and I genuinely believe whoever those people were were planning on murdering me or worse. Yep. I don't want to even think of what's worse than that. But selling my organs on the black market isn't completely out of the question now, is it? I can't with that face. I can't, bro. I remember one of the most traumatizing moments of my life, like it was yesterday. It all started on a normal Saturday. I worked as a pizza delivery driver for just shy of two years, but I quit the very same night all of this happened. As a teenager, my friends and I used to be those neighborhood degenerate kids that every neighbor would hate to have. Mm. I'm only barely being harsh on myself because it's the truth. Sometimes we would ding-dong ditch the houses a few streets over. Sometimes, we would do the same house more than once on the same nights. Yeah, I remember doing that with my friend. So her house was like three doors down down from me, so I would get on my bike. And luckily, there was like a little, like a side street. Like, not my street, but there was like a little road. And it's kind of like a little like road in between the streets if that makes sense like there's a street but there's like a road here so it's kind of like in between so her house was like right here and then here was like the road so i could easily just boot it but for some reason i went home even though that was that uh, took longer so then after i did it two or two or three times i was like you know what i'm bored let's do it again 
don't know what the fuck I was doing. I was just a, st a stupid kid, right? Okay, sorry guys. I did not think I was I, I was recording for a second. I was like, fuck me. But yeah, so. So yeah, I remember I, I did that. And then I remember my friend's mom came out. was just on the sidewalk, like. I see her and I was like, Whoa. so I was like, so like, you know, she's here. I kind of come out in my driveway. I see her and I was like, whoop, <laughs> then I go back home. Just to see if we could get a better reaction. Mm. Well, there was a man named Mr. Johnson. Oh, fuck. He knew most of us kids and wasn't very fond of us. He knew what we were up to in the neighborhood, I think. Probably the same degeneracy he was up to as a young boy as well. I'm sure he thought we were the ones knocking on his door all those nights, but he really didn't have the proof. So things were always forced to stay civil between us. I always wondered if he had a hunch. We messed with him multiple weekends that summer and never got caught. Well, fast forward to September of the same year. I was working my usual night shift delivering pizzas. Night I got shift. an order for a simple cheese pizza. I noticed that it was the same street as my parents, in the same neighborhood. But what I had no clue was that the order was for Mr. Johnson's house. It wasn't until that I was halfway down the street that I realized who the order was for. The name was under Mark, which had to be Mr. Johnson's first name, I assumed. I swallowed my pride and hoped he wouldn't recognize me. I knocked on the door and waited, with every second feeling like the time was standing still. When finally, the door swung open. In an instant, Mr. Johnson was towering over me and I got a huge whiff of what his house smelled like. There was a very off-putting smell coming from that house. It smelled like garbage. Hello, he said with a creepy smile rubbing off his face. I took a step closer, and he hunched over to whisper something in my ear. I could now smell his breath, which smelled like rotten eggs and stale cigarettes. If you ever come back here, I will kill you, he said. And the same thing goes for your stupid little friends. But then he patted me on the back and gave me a $50 bill, which covered the pizza and added a generous tip. I didn't say anything. Our eyes locked together, and I think he got the hint that I understood him loud and clear. After I got in my car, Mr. Johnson was standing right where I saw him last, and he was staring me down. I bolted out of there, but not before noticing him lifting his shirt up, which revealed a gun tucked in his pants. He then pointed at me with his hand in the shape of a fake gun, and pretended to shoot me, and started laughing. Oh my god. I was too nervous to tell my friends about what happened as they would probably make fun of me for being scared. Oh my god. And I knew that would only make them want to mess with him more. And I was right because a few weeks later I ended up telling them. We were all hanging out when they all decided it was time to go out and egg some houses, including Mr. Johnson's. I was worried about all of our safety so I had to tell them. I ended up getting into a huge argument with my friends, and they sort of laughed at me and called me a pussy like I thought they would. But they don't understand the seriousness of this man, and neither do any of you listening. He was a very scary man, and he was a lot bigger up close. He had some muscle on him, and he looked like a neo-Nazi. A man that doesn't fuck around, let me put it that way. I didn't want to find out, so I stayed home that night, and I stayed in any other time after that. Since my friends keep messing with Mr. Johnson, I'm just worried that he's going to think I have a part in it. I don't go outside by myself very often in my own neighborhood, because I'm worried I will run into him. I told my parents, and they said I deserved it for being a dumbass, which might be, Damn. Harsh, Damn. might be true, but I don't think I deserve to die. Although I feel guilty for what I did, I like my life and would like to continue living it. Maybe I'm the asshole. I mean, yes, like, you kind of deserve that scare, for sure, not to die. That's a little bit dramatic, but definitely that scare, yes, you kind of deserve that scare. Just like I deserve that scare when she was like, and I was like, okay, I'm going to check, check, check back around now. I'm sorry, sir, ma'am. I was unemployed and desperate. My fiancé was sick, and we just had a newborn. It was up to me to bring some money in that we needed badly. Why is she lifting her shoulders? I had a good job at General Motors, getting paid quite well but I was laid off and eventually fired completely. Mm. I searched and searched for any job that would hire me, and after a couple of days of walking into every restaurant in town, I got myself an interview. 
was at a oh, small local pizza. pizza place in my small town that I grew up in. I loved this place growing up, so it was going to be cool to see how the food was made after all these years. They needed a driver, and I of course accepted. I got the hang of everything quickly, as the job really is as simple as it sounds. Do you just like? Do you need a full a full license, or can you? Because I'm I'm assuming in the states you guys also have like a partial license where you don't have all the driving privileges. But for here we have like a G1, which is just like a written test, which you can drive with somebody that has a full license for like several years. So I can drive with my parents because they've had their full license for years now. Then there's G2, which means that's what I had a few years ago, and that's basically you can drive yourself, but they're still not. Like there's still some restrictions, and then with your full license, just to call the G, then that's like your full license. So G1, G2, and G. I have my G now. But do you need your, like your full license to be a pizza delivery driver? I know in my security job, I need my full license to, to drive the company car. Makes sense. But I need my full license for that. So I don't know if you need the same thing for a pizza place, because again, it's pizza. Like, as long as you would drive, right? I didn't even have to make the food, unlike what I expected. My one and only job was to take the pizza to the customers and keep a polite mannerism while doing so. The money obviously wasn't great, but it paid the bills, which was the most important part. I worked here for maybe five months, and nothing bad really happened until the last week that I worked there. I put my two weeks in after this incident and ended up leaving before the two weeks were even up. Damn. I got an order for a pizza, and just like normal, I got in my car and headed that way. Up until this point, the worst thing about being a pizza delivery driver for me, and the only horrific thing to happen, if you even want to call it that, was when the customer didn't tip, mm. which happened at least twice a night. On average, I would deliver about 10 or so pizzas a night, and there was always that one guy or grouchy woman who wouldn't tip. It sucked, but it was just part of the job. Mm. I'm pretty sure what I experienced this night was far more horrific than a mean troll of a woman not tipping every once in a while. The house was in a rural area, which Whoa. definitely added a sprout of creepiness and my nice curiosity. Too. I pulled into the driveway, and I couldn't see the house. There were trees all in the front yard, and I was starting to get nervous. It doesn't sound scary, but I've heard horror stories that start out like this before. And little did I know, I was about to become one of those stories before. And little did I know, I was about to become one of those stories I crept up the driveway until I saw the front porch. I stopped the car immediately and walked up there quickly. The music swaying. Quietly. I knocked on the door, and then I noticed after waiting for a minute, there was a piece of paper with tape on it, on the ground. It looked like it may have fallen from the door. With money? With 40 bucks taped to the back of it. It said, please bring the pizza inside. Just set it right in front of the door. That's when I really started feeling queasy. I really did not want to do that, so I set the pizza down on the porch and went back to my car. I wish I would have just left like I was planning to, but I felt guilty for not doing what the note asked. So after debating with the devil and the angel on my shoulder for probably five minutes, I hustled out of the car and back up to the porch. I opened the front door and set the pizza down quickly. Hello? Anyone there? Pizza's here. Nobody answered. The number one rule is you never go into somebody's house, especially if they say, oh yeah, open the door and just leave it inside. If you want me to open your door, I don't even think I would, I would open your door, but the most I would do is open the door, throw the pizza in, slam that shit, and leave. But then I feel like people would come up behind me as I'm inside and then just beat my ass or something, or do something, so mm -mm. But I heard something that spooked me, so I ran away. I went to close the door on my way out but I left it cracked open by accident. There was a man that came trampling outside a few seconds too late. He was wearing all black clothing and a creepy old man mask. He had a large shiny object in his hand, which I assumed was a knife. I drove out of there as fast as I could, and my heart was beating through my chest. Fuck, bro. I had just escaped being murdered by only a few seconds. Okay, great. That just happened, I said to myself. I couldn't believe it. All those horror stories you hear growing up, and eventually something like it happening to you. It felt like the world was ending, even though I knew I was safe. I kept having nightmares back to that night, when I was driving away from him. He would chase me down and ram me off the road. And then ultimately, it usually ended with him murdering me. This evil man has never been found as far as I know. Of 
course I called the police, but nobody owns a house just like we all expected. I was almost the victim of a horrifying trap. Always listen to your gut. Fuck, bro. That's the thing, like, you never know when to listen to your gut and when not to. Typically you would, just because I feel like that's, like, the best thing to do is listen to your gut, because then it's like... Do you know what I mean? Oh my god, I used to watch Louie Lane, I used to watch that girl. Anyways. Yeah, like, I feel like it's just... Fuck, bro, I just... Oh my god. The pizza prices are actually a horror story in itself, honestly, for sure. His voice is coming in practical, it makes the story scarier. I felt his breath would smell like rotten eggs and cigarettes. Who's the new guy? Like his voice, it's so calm. Is this like a new narrator or something? Because I, I, I just thought it was the same one. Anyways, how many subs do they have? 109. Oh, almost a million subs for I'm Our Tales. That's pretty good. 115,000 views. That's pretty good. This is a story I used to have. When I was 10, I lived in Indonesia. And the time I was in a mall with my parents, and I usually used to play around chasing my brother. But one time when I was playing with my brother, I bumped into a tall man with clothes all over his body. He was six feet tall, and I could see his beard was covering his mouth. But when I saw his teeth, teeth, it was sharp, and there was tiny red spots on his teeth that terrified me. My, my brother had told me, I told my parents, and they took me away. When I was going away, I saw he smiled at me. I saw a sharp thing coming out of his pocket. Oh my god, bro. Fuck, that's terrifying. Anything like that, bro, I just literally cannot. Like, I'm in security, too, and that honestly terrifies me because, like, I got night shift and shit, too. It's like, you just never know what you're going to see, who you're going to expect. Like, you never know what to expect. You, you're not going to expect anything like that, right? So it's, it's just fucking scary shit, bro. But, oh my god, I just hate pe people sometimes. Like, I told you guys the, the story of when I went to the mall the other day, right? Because I had to go to the mall for something. And then I'm waiting at the stoplight just before the mall. Because there's, there's a stoplight, you know, the hand is like red saying, don't, don't walk yet. I just arrived there, some guy stares me down. Like, for a, for a solid 30 to 45 seconds, even when I was trying trying to avoid him, I'm sucking straight at the light. I see him right here, still looking at me. Still see him, sorry. I still see him, like, right here looking at me. Like, I can see my hand right here. You know what I mean? Like, you can see in your, in your peripherals. I'm not even trying to, but I could see, I could feel him staring me down. So I, I looked over and I said, what? And then he kind of seemed to laugh, but not the kind of laugh that's like, oh, you know, I'm just fucking with you sort of thing, because I didn't even know this man. And then he kind of took a step closer to me, and I was like, mm-mm, no thank you, sir. It was kind of getting dark, uh, dark already, but it was just really scary, bro. So please don't fuck up with people. So as soon as he did that, I started backing up, because I'm like, nope, no, mm -mm, nope. You're not getting close to me. I have dreams of someone coming close to me and murdering me. I'm, I'm not living that. No, thank you. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be safe out there, because you want to see just never know what to... Yeah, you just never know what to expect, to be honest, when it comes to anything. Kind of going to get pizza, going to the store, like, you never know what you could expect. Some creepy guy pulling out a freaking knife or gun on you. It's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, that's just terrifying. God. I remember I went for a walk the other day, and I, of course it's winter now, so it's dark. And it gets dark at, like, 5, 6 p.m. Because it's, like, mid-February, it'll start getting a bit lighter soon. Or it'll be lighter longer soon, I believe, but basically it's still, like... It's, it's still February, still got started pretty easily, pretty soon. It was like 9 p.m. I, I went for a walk. In the summer, that's around the time that it starts getting dark around 9, which is fantastic. And then it's like 9, 10, 9, 9, 9, 15. That's when the sun goes down, and it's so nice, bro. I fucking love the summer. Just not when I work night shift, because I'm up all night, even though it, it, it's nice all night, too, so I can enjoy, enjoy the weather at night. There's no sun, I can't enjoy the sun. Because I'll be sleeping all day as well. Anyways, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be safe out there, because you just never know who you're going to run into. E even meeting up with someone, please be careful going to somebody's house. Please just be careful with all that. Please, if you're dating somebody, please like confirm their face. Like if you're dating someone online, please confirm that they are who they are. Like make sure that you know who you're meeting, bro. And obviously with like delivery and Amazon delivery, pizza delivery, any kind of kind of delivery, you just don't know, don't know who you're delivering to. So please always be cautious because that can definitely be a horror story. That's why I just prefer when people drop my food off. I say leave it outside, like Uber Eats. I say leave it outside. After you leave, I'll pick it up. No interaction. They uh, they come, drop it off, take a photo, dip. I'm like, okay, they're gone. I don't want any contact with them because like I don't, I don't want to talk to someone at three at, at three in the morning when I'm ordering McDonald's. Mm -mm. Anyways, yeah. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to myself. I am our scary tales. Like this video, comment down below all your guys' thoughts, and if you guys have any horror stories of your own. Thank you so much for tuning into my next one. I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces. Peace.